So these people, uh, they uh, have discussed regarding, uh, they, they call it the High contract, Contracting Party to the convention on certain conventional weapons through group of governmental experts on emerging technologies in the area lethal weapons system since 2016. Uh, nanti kamu, nanti rasanya, oh, bagaimana kan besar sekali. Ya, benar. Kerana kalau kita lihat, uh, di, di United Nations itu ada banyak uh, treaties. There so many treaties. And these treaties, one of its treaties is regarding the weapons. And if you go deep on it, you will see that so many treaties under the weapons treaties. So one of it is the group of governmental expert on emerging technologies in the area level with autonomous weapon system. Ini, ini kumpulan pakar, ya, kumpulan expert berkenaan dengan what is the technologies, the latest technologies in the area of lethal autonomous weapons. Uh, mereka ini tidak bercakap tentang um, ordinary weapons. Bukan seperti pistol, senapang, itu kita tidak berkata, kita tidak berbincang itu. Kita berbincang tentang the emerging technologies and what is happening at this moment and why the company of the weapon production are getting more crazy to create the weapon that can kill people more than what is expected. Nanti kamu kami nanti kan sudah belajar kan di dalam uh, hukum humaniter mesti ada proportionality. Tetapi dalam uh, hakikat yang sebenar, proportionality itu seperti tidak wujud. It looks like there is no uh, welfare, warfare that really fair to people. Uh, macam yang kita bincangkan minggu lepas, kalau uh, kita ada nuclear weapon dan pihak lawan tidak ada nuclear weapon, kita tidak boleh menggunakan nuclear weapon kerana itu dianggap sebagai tidak proportionate, tidak adil. Habis kalau begini, mak maknanya kalau kamu ada long range missile, orang di sana mesti ada long range missile. Itu yang dikatakan proportionality. Ya. Dan uh, and apa yang menggusarkan, yang membimbangkan, yang become more concerned is rapid developments toward the expanding the use of AWS and the humanitarian, legal and ethical concern. Uh, sebagaimana yang saya katakan tadi, syarikat-syarikat pengeluar uh, di uh, negara seperti Amerika Syarikat, uh, uh, UK, South Africa dan sebagainya, mereka akan mengeluarkan senjata-senjata yang terkini. Because they want to sell the weapon. So if you have the old technology, then no one wants to buy your weapons. But you need to have the latest technology in your weapons. Contohnya kalau kita lihat, um, Amerika Syarikat bersama Israel banyak sekali mengeluarkan senjata-senjata yang membunuh dalam bentuk yang kecil. Maknanya um, mereka menggunakan bom yang berskala kecil tetapi boleh membunuh ramai orang. Uh, kalau uh, memang itu adalah senjata-senjata yang dilarang di bawah Convention uh, United Nations, tetapi um, mereka tidak peduli kerana uh, weapons itu adalah bisnes utama mereka. Jadi mereka mereka cuba untuk uh, memberi yang terbaik, the best, you know, create weapons so then people will buy and it means more money for them. Ya, yeah? jadi di situ kenapa Amerika Syarikat dan bersama Israel dan juga negara-negara pengeluar senjata yang lain, they are really creative to expanding the use of AWS, the autonomous weapon system, and that's impact on the humanitarian, legal and ethical concern. Nah kita akan lihat adakah uh, AWS ataupun autonomous, autonomous weapon system ini really give a bad impact in the international humanitarian law yang kita belajar, yang kita sedang pelajari sekarang. Okay, but what, what is the current and emerging uh, autonomous weapon system? What, what is happening around the world now when we talk about this current and emerging, uh, uh, this autonomous weapon system? Okay, first of all, when you see this, this is the new technology when people go for war. Yeah, The aim of this autonomous weapon system is to exploration of the future battlefield. Maknanya mereka tidak lagi melihat Peperangan itu mungkin akan berlaku seperti berdepan di, di darat mungkin dari bangunan ke bangunan. No, no, they're not thinking about it anymore. We are talking about how we use uh, the minimum of human being di dalam peperangan, tetapi mesti dikendalikan oleh electronics or the high technology weapon. So maknanya nanti kamu akan lihat kalau pesawat tidak lagi diterbangkan oleh juru terbang. It's no more pilot fighters in the uh, in the uh, when they fly uh, the jet they are they actually somewhere else That's, this is only the electronic that they control to make as if that that plane have the pilot actually it's not 
So kadar kematian akan berkurangan. Uh, dan um, for example, I have one student uh, because I teach at the Defence College. So I got one Singaporean uh, student who actually uh, fighter pilot, and he told me that um, I don't go and fly the, the 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 jet anymore. What he do is just he sit down in one room, and he the one who control the plane. So this is this is something that very futuristic, but for 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 Singapore that that is common. So that's why many countries, the developed countries, they are talking about the autonomous weapon system to the, regarding the exploration of the future battlefield. What what the battlefield that you need? We don't want to like you know like a uh, rainbow di uh, dalam film itu bukan. We are talking about when where where we are coming very quiet. We kill you quiet. We come back quiet. This is something that very very interesting. So, using the autonomous weapon system, we receive the information on the enemy's force structure. Where is the location and what is the potential of our enemy? Kalau begitu mudah. Contohnya saya ber Malaysia having a problem with one country, and if we using this system, we already know where is. How many is the battalion of our enemy, and how many of the uh, human forces, and where is their camp? Uh, how many the infantry, for example, they have? How many this? We got many, many things we know. So when you know your enemy's weakness, that is the place you attack them. So this is why this autonomous weapon system are very popular among many countries to defend their country. Because for them, it's like uh, it's a deterrence. Like for example, as I said to you, if Malaysia have the nuclear weapon, many country want to attack Malaysia. They will think twice. So if we attack Malaysia, then suddenly Malaysia will show their capability of of the nuclear weapon, then we die. So this is about at least there is a deterrence, deterrence, but also comfort for the country who have this uh, uh, autonomous weapon system. Let me be clear with you. Nuclear weapon is not autonomous weapon system. Eh? Don't be, uh, do not be confused. Nuclear weapon is is not being talked in IHL because it's already illegal. Uh, because we don't bring that issues. There's another another venue. But what I'm talking now is is just like you see under the means where we're talking about the unmanned air vehicles. Like I told you, there's no pilots anymore. And then radars. Radars is the one that everyone is talking about how we can make a radar that people cannot read. How we can have the radar that we can even realize the submarine down under the sea. So this is this is what we want. And, and this is how they create because but, if they know have, if they have a, they know the air vehicles, they know the radars, then it's easy for them to attack the enemy. And sonars. Sonars is the one that very, I can say before this, we don't want to talk about sonars. But now, China is already last week, they have the exercise or they launch the hypersonic missile and it makes US stun. And US state, what you have done? This is very dangerous. And China just said, no, we, we, just, we just launch normal missile. Then when NASA look at through the radar, China are not having a launch of normal missile, they already launch hypersonic missile. Sangat uh, berbahaya, very dangerous, because the hypersonic missile, if you uh, if you launch to another one city, they will make the whole of the city blackout and all the system jam. Maknanya, kalau um, China launch hypersonic missile itu, ke, ke ibu negara seperti uh, ke Kuala Lumpur contohnya Sekarang, seluruh Kuala Lumpur akan bergelap we not got electricity and we, ada jalan cerita cut, sendiri we cannot use our phone we cannot we cannot watch tv or anything because they already like jam the system so it's a very dangerous if you're talking about uh, talking about uh, this kind of uh, threat now this US not happy at all. But China, as you just saying that we just launched the normal, yeah, the normal um a satellite, so or, or normal um missile, so no problem. And then uh also there is a space satellite. Space satellites is, is every day uh done by US and China. And for your information, China loves to uh launch 
space satellites about every day three to seven. This is to show to you that China are very advanced and also love to be more involved in the autonomous weapon system. Despite people say uh, the best are still US, China are not, but my experience uh, visiting uh, China uh, area regarding this uh, space satellite center, I think they are not like what we thought. They are really ready to improve themselves and they are really improving themselves at this moment. And this is a military robot. This is so much controversy when it's come to military robots because US is touched uh, a few times already in, in Afghanistan. And if you can see from the pictures, uh, you see that uh, the US always come out that robots plays a constantly increasing role in warfare. They don't want to kill their enemy and sorry, they don't want to kill their soldiers. So they are sending the robot at the battlefield. So when they have the unmanned aerial reconnaissance and combat vehicles, like you can see on the right ups, uh, this is where they, they are the one who can realize that where is the bomb, where is the uh, this uh, boom uh, booby traps and all this thing. And then there is also they have the demeaning robots, and there is like the name of spikers or raspy because this is the way where they they can play. Uh, like a fly, like you see on the hand, on the fingers, but actually I know that is actually a weapon. It's actually a system. So that's why sometimes nowadays we have to be curious with so many things. Sometimes uh, we don't know. If we're not talking about the the, the CCTV anymore. We they are more advanced than CCTV. They are bringing uh, technology into the animals, or they bring up like animals, but it's just not. It's, it's to spy on you. And a universal military robots capable of substituting soldiers. Uh, you see that uh, they got many. They got four legs, and you see that as if that they can bring four soldiers at one time. And these robots knows that about how many kilometers their enemy. But people are complain and give uh, also. Um, the, they command that this involves ethicals because robots, they are not human beings. They are electronic things. And they don't have any feelings, any empathy, any humanity. So if they see there is any movement in front of them, they will shoot. Jika ada tentera yang di situ, mungkin tentera itu akan lihat dahulu manusia atau binatang atau pelarian, refugees or any uh, POWs yeah, or any detainees there. But robots, no, they are being object. Like, is there any um, object that in front of them, of, for example, 50 meters, shoot. So they will shoot. So these people are talking about how we're going to protect the human rights when there is happenings, the conflict. Because if you're using the robots, the robots is technology, yes, but they, do, they are not human. They don't have the feelings. Yeah. So they are being controlled by what they're being controlled. So bagaimana kalau yang lalu itu manusia? Mungkin manusia itu perlu diselamatkan but because of robots, they for them shoot. When is you get something near sense of it, you shoot. So they shoot and die. So this is what bring uh, the discussion to another level. Because yes, you have this in the autonomous weapon system but you lack of the ethical issue because you are not human. So if you're not human, can you yeah, can you ensure that this all machine understand there is a need of a human to be uh, protected and there is a need of human to be safe. So this is where the problems of the latest consistency with the Geneva Convention appear already. This is what the Geneva Convention worry because we already have the set of rules, Geneva Conventions and the protocols A1 to uh, 1 to 3. But the problem is if this kind of robot is being used in the war, are we really can are we really can show that this robot respect the Geneva Conventions? A very big issue when you look at it. Then we have the artificial intelligence. Saya percaya para mahasiswa is already heard about the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. We are being uh, you know being told about it so many times, but how the artificial intelligence are being used uh, in this perspective. You know, 
you have to understand this AI, artificial intelligence, does not exist a vacuum. Yeah, and there's artificial intelligence only needs to be perceived as capable to have a destabilizing impact. Is that I say they are just purely electronics. So they, they don't have any way to think like human being. We, despite how bad we are, we are human being. There is a certain level in your heart that, that make you think, but these AI, they are not. And for them, there are no loopholes or anything. It's like I said to you, if there is a to shoot 50 meters to shoot, they will shoot when they find a sense, anyone or anything that moves 50 meters from them. So that's why when we say that they perceive as capable, and, and, and to have destabilizing impact. Because you not know what is their impact because they are being programmed to kill. So when they're programmed to kill, can you ensure that these robots or this AI or this machine understand that? And I, I doubt it, we, we don't have it. And then you see the nuclear multipolar world or the compounds AI to destabilizing effect. And that is even worse because if you start to using AI in the nuclear weapons, that, that is going to be more complicated because you might launch your uh, weapons, your nuclear weapons, and you can imagine the effect after that. I think you can only see the effect of, of the nuclear is only regarding Fukushima 10 years ago and also regarding the Hiroshima Nagasaki. But you can't have... To see, you cannot afford to see what is going on if any of this country, you know, use their nuclear weapons at this moment, at this time. The impact is, is, is really, we can't, we, can't, we can't really tell how is it. And then uh, the strategic advantages of this AI, they have the infused weapon that may prove irresistible to state to gain the technological upper hand and the rivals. Okay, in this case, Many countries really, uh, I can say, uh, they are really compete each other. Okay, the first country that really giving AI in their weapon is Russia. It's not US, it's not China, but it's Russia. Russia is a country that back in 2015, uh, the Putin say, uh, the president said, Russia is actually doing well and in the lab doing very good for the artificial intelligence for the weapons. And as you know, um, Russia is a country that very hard for you to get any information. Their understanding of science is different from us. And their philosophy towards military, towards science, and towards AI is very far different from China or US. So even if you try to read, their, their writing is all in Russian language. It's very hard to get the English. So this is a problem that when Russia Start and already recognize artificial intelligence as a part of their weapon uh, modernization, that will give more problem. Dan seperti biasa, kawan baik Rusia adalah China. Dan China sudah uh, berbaik-baik dengan Rusia untuk memastikan semua senjata China, negara China mempunyai AI uh, impact. Maknanya, seboleh-bolehnya China mahukan semua senjatanya bertaraf uh, berteknologi tinggi, the high technology, and this is and also uh, US also are start crazily when heard that Russia and China join together. So US in the in the remote area, in their secret area, in the desert, and all that, they start to have their lab and they start to to really uh, serious about the AI. And I think since Barack Obama time, AI is always being said. And then uh, only a little bit quiet during Trump, and now under Biden is coming back. So this is where we can see that all those developed countries which have the nuclear weapons, they really proof of the strategic advantages of AI. So AI is also the autonomous system, system which is really can give a grief impact if you are not controlled during conflict or, the, or during war. And also, if you can see, they can co-mingle military technology and, and adverted escalation risks. Um, we understand that um, multi-faceted possibility intersection of AI with nuclear weapons, as I said to you, is a very dangerous. What we worry is when they start to connect AI with the nuclear weapons. 
Because if you connect it with that, and really if there is a conflict and there's a war that really want to use that, I cannot imagine the, this, the I cannot imagine the damages and also uh, the impact, especially the bad impact on the country that facing it. But what made me more concerned is about the South China Sea, because it near at our home. Uh, and for Malaysia, it's just open the door. It's like we open the door and we see there's a South China Sea facing Sabah and Sarawak. So this is a very dangerous. Uh, and, and as you know that uh, China really uh, show their presence and really means to be there with their nine dash line, that's a really, really something that all ASEAN countries should look very carefully and should have the stand towards it. And I do believe US or China, they already uh, intersection of AI with their nuclear weapons. This is a very dangerous game actually. And then if you can see also the conventional weapon also enhanced by AI um, also might pose one of the greatest risks to nuclear escalation in future warfare. The problem is, the problem is, the problem is uh, the conventional weapons uh normal conventional weapons like 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 the uh like the like the like whatever people have to say uh the uh normal weapons uh like the, the conventional weapons that malaysia or indonesia have uh but when they enhance ai in that particular weapons then we are really concerned because they give the impact same like you use uh, the nuclear weapons in that particular weapon. So we are talking about, is there any future warfare that already changed? I think you should look at on the uh, impact of the, uh, the humanitarian issues in Afghanistan and in Iraq. For almost 20 years, US in both countries, US do many things. Uh, regarding the testing of the weapons. Uh, if you can see the controversial of US in Iraq is because they are using all, all of them using a new weapon that being tested in Iraq. So are we talking about that the human being, the civilian become the uh, this uh, animal or like the, the rat in the laboratory, you know, to show? Because there is one I can, I, I think that you, you can, uh, get it uh, the information when one of the issues that are uh, being raised in united nations uh, human rights is regarding that uh, the us is purposely purposely use civilian in 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 iraq and in afghanistan to test their weapons and always they said oh sorry we we our radar said that is a terrorist home no actually they are not they are knows that is the civilian but what they do is to ensure that there's a new place to look how good is the weapon is to test it on the civilian. And definitely they said, no, 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 we, we, we were wrong, we sorry, blah, blah, blah. But how come they said sorry? They are the country who have the radar that can read down under this water and they can't know that it's in the children or the women or the uh, family in the house. That's why if you next time when you hear about it, you have to understand this is more about this technology that, that cannot be used in the lab but need to be test on the real life. So the place that to be good to test is the place where you create the conflict. And then you, you clean your hand and say goodbye. Like what the US already done in uh, Afghanistan and also in uh, Iraq. And then the problem also is the challenging long-held assumptions about deterrence, arm control, and crisis stability. That will be a problem because when everyone is upgrade their weapons with AI, then it's a very much for us to do the deterrent. It's a very difficult because we don't know the real capability. As I said to you, if, if your country have this, okay, another enemy country have this, we know whether it's proportionate, proportionate or not. But if no, then there is a problem. Kamu tidak boleh menjangkakan, kamu tidak boleh mengukur. Oh, you can't say that, oh, they won't have this. Because AI is really infinity. Kesannya itu tidak dapat dilihat, melainkan kamu sudah mula berperang. And at that time, it's too late. Because we don't know. And as usual, as normal, the person who's going to suffer is the people who are not involved. It's us. We're not interested to be an army. We're not interested to become a rebel. We're not we want to, to be part of this uh, 
conflict but the worst part of it is because you are civilian and you are going to have the very much impact compared to these two fighters. So this is the things. And the, this crisis of stability, we don't know how to ensure that this situation. So that's why these autonomous weapon systems are being talked, being discussed, being debated, because we don't know how much destroy that this, this thing can, can bring in international humanitarian and all. And also we have this hyper warfare and compressing the decision making time frame. Well, because you're using this autonomous weapon system and you, when you operate and respond at a gigahertz speed in use of military force, the gigahertz that, that can be used at any time. So when you operate and respond, you have the operation and you respond it and it can be very fast. And yet we don't know how worse is the uh, consequences from that operation. And also we would like to combination of autonomy and speed will likely have outside strategic effects. Okay, when you have this autonomous weapon system with the weapons that you, you pair with it, the problem is like the, the consequences or the effect from it, you, you can't tell, you don't know. That's why you say outside strategic effect. Okay, you might think, okay, we want only to bomb this building. But when they use the AI or use this autonomous weapon system, there is not only that building collapse, they might, but the entire town collapse. That's why this ICRC and this United Nations high contracting parties are very much concerned on this. Because we don't know the craziness of these productions of this kind of weapons. But if you can see, uh, and also if you read lately, there are so many a tragedy that impact on this. Now, sometimes we're thinking that how this kind of weapon can kill the entire village because they don't know. Because they say, okay, we try it. Okay, whatever happened, this Afghan people, this Afghan people die, not American people die. So that's it. So this is the problem. And always the third world country become the victim of innocence. And always the third country or the poor country become the laboratory for this first world country by creating conflict. I, I'm very much saying this because uh, from uh, my research on security study, I found out that almost, almost all country that having this uh, weapons industry, they love to get involved in many conflict around the world or create conflict around the world so then they can sell their weapons. Uh, so this is this is a very very much and if you can see which bomb that killed the Palestinian civilian is always either made in US or made in Israel. So in one point you might say the more the most uh, uh, free the most democracy blah 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 is America shark that is um, this um, this US but at one point, then you will see that they are also the person who love to create everything to ensure their industries are still doing well in this. So when you have this kind of hyper warfare, the human error and machine error is actually will likely compound one another with uncertain and unexpected outcome. Okay, human error is still done by human. For example, if, 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 I, if I drive a car and suddenly I'm collapsed, it's still controlled by me and normally I will involve an accident at the capacity of me because it's human being. But if you have the machine error, you don't know because machines are not being controlled. Machines cannot control themselves. Machines are being, what, being controlled from the beginning. If you put that, it's about that 100 gigahertz and they will go 100 gigahertz and that will make the entire town collapse. So that, that's why I said that we are dealing with a very dangerous weapons that everyone around the world at this moment are talking about. And also for this production, we need to have this so then the warfare become more interesting. We will test whether, okay, we kill the kids, this is what happened in kids, we will happen to the adults and also to the old people. So they look at it. If that's why, for me, creating a conflict is a must for the country who have this so that they can go on and on with their experiment. So why at this time, the current and emerging, what is the current and emerging autonomous weapon system? What now? What happened now? Yeah, why? What is people talking? So uh, this 
AWS are weapons that fire themselves when triggered by an object or person at a time and place that is no specifically no no chosen by the user. That's why I say it's it's just electronic. They don't know because when you already say 15 meters shoot when they have the, any movement, any movement, any sign, they shoot. So that that will the 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 impact will be the increased speed in targeting. Yeah, if human being, we see human being. Okay, we might stop. We want we might want to shoot, but but still, we we are human being. We will think. But if this, they will start to launch the attack, and if there is fifty people, fifty will die. So that's why we see increased speed in targeting, and also automated denial because they are not. Uh, you cannot control. You cannot automate it off because it's already suit be like that. So they are denying any any attempts to to down because they will start shooting, and the shooting must be. But if it's fifty and fifty bullets, the fifty bullets will go. And then the continuing and attack when communication are denied. Yeah, for example, if we are human being, and if you see that any white flag or any surrender uh, signal by the enemy or the detainees or uh, prisoners of war, you will stop. You not attack. But this, they are not. You will continue attack because that's what they are being already set. And then you have this this operating in greatest numbers, including swarms and all that, because because this 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 capability of the the uh, automat autonomous weapon system is beyond the normal capability oh. they can be the one the, the wrong the wrong uh, sorry they will be the long way to go for operation rather than maybe two hours or three hours uh, practicing by by us you know by the normal conventional uh, war so if you can see very very dangerous because it's increased speed in targeting it's automatic are denial and continuing an attack when communication are denial and operating in greatest numbers including swamps so still uh, for me this is a very dangerous we need to have the guideline we need to have a law regarding this or otherwise we created more more and more killing people at one point now people are talking about the you, the climate change at one point they forget that worse than climate change is these things yeah climate change is because we don't know how to respect the environment it's true but this one we created the mass killing of all the innocent people if we will not stop it for me when it's come to even if we come to the former combatant or uh, pws or pow's or even detainees we have a respect we must at least have a respect at least your humanity because they are human but if we come to the robot they don't have the humanity they are machines and machines are being controlled like what they already be installed so this is this is something that for me the craziness of the industries to create more conflict and to create more people to die. So uh, not only that, uh, you also said that, that what is the current trend in military at this moment? What, what is the military of the country love to do? Yeah. So current trends uh, in military interest and investment indicate that without in channel internationally agreed limits, future uh, Autonomous weapon system, maybe because they are because military always interest. Military, they really want to have the latest technology because it means champion, it means menang, win, who win. So for them, it's okay because the target is to kill. Yeah, if you're talking to any of 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 this uh, military officer, they're not saying human rights. They're not saying but humanity. They are talking one bullet to kill one person. So this is different from the civilian thinking and these military people thinking. So what is the current in 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 the situation of uh, military world today is increasingly reliant on AI and machine learning software where they're raising concern about unpredictability by design. That's why I always uh, advise students, if there is any uh, conference or there is any exhibitions on the military weapons or like uh, Malaysia, we have the DSA every two years, I will always say to them, go and look and study what is the latest technology that bring by this, uh, all those companies, the manufacturer of the weapons. And whether you like it or not, you will see, they will try their best to sell their weapons and they try their best to say that these weapons have relation with the AI and we have the software, we, we will make 
you know, the world are more exciting. But uh, when we're talking about proportionality, which country that can have this kind of design? That must be the country who put more uh, allocation for their defense budget. So you are talking about my country, we're not going to have this because our priority are not on this kind of software. Our priority is especially at this moment is a health education and welfare for our people. And I do believe in ASEAN, many of the country are really want to grow up by after COVID. So we are not going to have to buy something which is have this kind of software that can kill thousand people one time. So, but the current military trending is like that. And also uh, used to target people and greater variety of objects. Remember last week, we are talking about what is this military object that what you have to attack. But when you use this, you are going to target innocent people and also many other things which is not supposed to be destroyed will be destroyed. The very sad for me when it's come to the war is the historical places. This is something that you can't get it back. Um, as, for example, I'm the person that if I go to any country, I love to go to their museum. Instead of beaches, I will go museum first. I love something that attract me is about the civilization of the country. Uh, that's for me, because if you understand the civilization of a country, you will understand the country very well. Uh, but many people, they, do, they, do, they, don't, they don't have the habit like that. But like for me, everywhere I go, I will always go first in the morning. I want to go to the museum. I want to go to all those historical places. When I understand the historical places, I understand the thinking of the people of that country. I understand the politics and the culture of that country. That is a very important. But you see when Iraq being attacked by uh, US and the France in 2003, many cultural artifacts or anything that being stolen by the US army, being brought to US, being destroyed and all that. And you know that that is the 5,000, 10,000 years of civilization. You not get it back. So this is, they say, that it used to target people and greater variety of objects. And then increasingly more mobile and use over wider areas for longer periods, carrying out multiple strikes. Of course, because when you have a longer period, the more advanced that can stand longer to fight, you can carry out multiple strikes instead that normal strike will be three, that will be about maybe 13. So more destroy. More destroy means more death. More death means more suffer. So that's why the autonomous weapon system are being taught, being discussed, being debated, because we want, we, we, we foresee that in future, if we allow this kind of weapon to be normalized in the war, warfare, then we are kill more people. Really. Yeah. So, and you, when they use this in cities and towns where civilian will be most at the risk, because city and town is where the many of people were, many of people put their, you know, uh, they, they, they stay there because that is where the economic uh, activities and also anything is there rather than in, in the rural area. So if you use when you have the conflict and you want to attack the cities and town, you will create more death among the civilians because they can't go anywhere. And as in a good example, you see in Syria, when Russia together with the Bashar al-Assad regime's military attacked the normal people in, in, uh, uh, in a place um, uh, in, in, in Syria, you will see that how many children die, how many people are die, they are not combatants. They are just normal people like us who, who are being trapped, cannot run, cannot, cannot get uh, help from international because of the regime. So I think this is something that uh, uh, we need to look at very serious. And like I said, I'm more concerned on the human life rather than talking about the two superpowers who want to gain uh, the victory by saying that we are I'm the better than that country, China, better than US, US better than China or any country. So use without effective human supervision, they have a timely intervention and deactivation. As I said to you again, if you are just using uh, this kind of machine, despite you said, okay, we control it, but is a machine is always break down at a time that unexpected. It's like a car, you say, we already go for service, but when it's come on to break down, you can't control it. 
You said, hey, what's wrong with my car? I already, you know, uh, accordingly service it at the service center, but why is breakdown? Because it's a machine. You can't, you can't, if you go good, you are servicing it, but if anything happened, you are beyond the control. So, so this even worse because it's a trend. So when it becomes a trend, the manufacturer want to build the best and they are competing to make the best among this. So the best will get more contract by the superpower to gain more. So this is, I say, at the end of the day, who going to face this? Is the environment and the civilian. So that's why this topic is, is really important and not many, uh, I said people, one student uh, raised the, the hand. Okay, what is the question? Someone raised raise the hands. You want to do you want to ask a question or you want to wait until we finish? Okay, let, let, let me finish, yeah, then we talk, okay. All right, so what is the international humanitarian law concern? What, in what way that we concern this? Okay, first, what we, what we concern is unpredictability. As I said to you, unpredictability in autonomous weapon system. We cannot predict. Unpredictability in AWS poses a fundamental challenge to international humanitarian law because we are talking about the proportionality, deterrence, use of force, uh, provocation, protection. Suddenly, this thing happened. It's like gone. Everything that we talk is gone. And all the superpowers, all the developed countries, they love AWS because this is the shoulder, the power, the strength. For the politician, their ego is more important than people. Bless if your country have the president or prime ministers are not love to talk about this, but more about to enhance the economics and the social for the people. But for the country who are talking about we are ready to go for, for war at any time, then this is a very excited for them. So the customary international humanitarian law prohibit weapons they are by nature indiscriminate. Definitely this system is indiscriminate. You can't control it. You don't know when it's going to be denied. And if you start to stop, they're not going to stop because they are already don't want to respect to the denial. So this is the things. And uh, certain uh, automatous, uh, autonomous weapon system would be inherently indiscriminate and thus prohibited under existing international humanitarian law could not be sufficiently understood, predicted, and explained because it's beyond what is the existing IHL talking about. Because IHL is already done for so long, the Geneva Convention and the protocol is back long time ago when this kind of technology are not exist yet. So this time is exist. So what can you do? Because it's like times different, uh, industrial different, and also that we also need to be more advanced. But for international humanitarian law, we are still the same. We are still want to protect and we don't want, and if there is a war, we want to minimize the escalations, yeah? And this would allow holding perpetrators of IHL violation to account. But in that kind of thing, it's done by robots. You want to persecute robots? No. Who's, who's being with this? It's the country, but the country will always say, it's not by me because I bought from the manufacturer. So you blame the manufacturer. So this is why the IHL say it's very, very hard for us to get to holding the perpetrators because they will keep, you know, finger each other that no, no, I, I think that, uh, that my country is by. I only the country that bought this. And I think the blame should be, should be put on the, uh, the production. And the production will say no, because I got the sub, sub contracts by, uh, by this uh, manufacturer. So this, everyone will say, they clean the hand and say, I don't know. But at the time of the human, the, the, the civilian die is already increased. So that's why, I bring this topic because many students, um, maybe some of you already knew, my some of you not really knew. And after this, you need to show what you need to know what, what is AS, AWS, AWS, what is that? So it's always there. And there are so many, if you if you even Google it, there are so many types of AWS. So can you imagine how we want to control them in international humanitarian law? Okay. And an ethical concern. Oh, definitely we talk about the ethical concern because we already have a guidelines. Despite the guidelines of IHL are not being respected by many people when they come to the conflict, but still we maintain the ethical concern because the process of uh, how this autonomous weapon system function is raises the fundamentals uh, ethical concern for humanity because 
they not determine who live who die. It's as it to you because they are being programmed. If there is any movement, any sense of a life thing, you shoot. So they will shoot. But if we are human beings, we go for it, we will look and we say, oh, there's a children. We're not going to kill. But for this, they see there is a children who run 15 minutes from that, they just kill. So this is the ethical concern. You cannot decide who's going to live for to die for you die. Simple. And then human have moral agency and responsibility that guide their decision and action, whereas inanimate objects do not. Yes, yes, despite we are facing enemy, enemy facing us, but we are both human beings. At one point, and I say, human, how bad you are, you are human. At one point, one point, even you are very bad, you still are human. So you still have humanity, empathy in your heart. In your heart, Different, definitely. Despite you, you hate your enemy, your, your enemy, but still there is. That's why we have to. But maybe this human moral are not being applied to Israel uh, military, yeah? and that one is not. They are always different. But for others, yes, because at one point you're not going to shoot because you know there there, there is you know indiscriminate to to kill like women with babies and so on. But uh, if there is the robots, then the robots don't care because for them, sense. Sense and feel the movement. Sense and feel the movement and kill. Okay? So this uh, autonomous weapon system also endanger uh, human beings and they are most acute with the system designed to target person directly. That's, this is why the IHL, all those countries were concerned about it. ICRC was talking about how, how we want to, to stop or minimize the people rather than to use, to allow the country to use this. Because if we normalize it, then we start to have a problem in future, yeah? And then uh, from the legal perspective, yeah, from the legal perspective, uh, we also look uh, a real risk of harm uh, because we want to uh, protect a person under uh, international humanitarian law. Uh, really, we want to put up, because the international humanitarian law is actually to save life during conflict, to minimize damage, and uh, any uh, places which is for the people rather than being damaged by the conflict. So in particular, uh, the use of uh, autonomous weapon system that targets human being is entails a significant risk that supposed to protect the civilian and combatants host the combat may trigger and this will strike. As I said to you, they are just have a sense. When they have a sense, there's a movement, they shoot. They don't know whether when you when you give the, the, the white flag and say, hello, we, we, we don't want to fight, we just a normal deal, they don't care because they cannot read, they cannot look. They call, this, 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 these are not programmed, this robot, this weapon are not programmed to say, okay, white flag means you cannot, you cannot strike. No, they're just only being strike, 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 movement, 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 strike, movement, sang, sang, and then they will do it. Uh, so this is the things. So uh, this is sound like Star, uh, the, like the Star Wars, isn't it? Uh, like all the Marvel and all that. Uh, so this is the things you might thinking in the in the Hollywood film, but in the reality, yes, this is going to be happen. And it's not fascinating for me. This is dangerous one, yeah. And it's a difficult to envisage uh, this uh, realistic combat situation uh, because this uh, automatic weapon system used against person would not pose a significant risk of the kite violation because as I said to you, they come in very quiet. They go also very quiet. So you, which part that you want to put them under the HF? Uh, and what about that country that uh, pr uh, practicing extra ju ju uh, judicial territory like US and Israel? Where um, for Israel, like normally they like to kill the commander of Hamas, like what they did in United Arab Emirates and also in Jordan. So you think using AWS is actually what they win. And then many people are being killed outside of the country because I threaten Israel. For example, if they don't like me, for example, then they will always try very, very best to kill me despite I'm in my country. So for example, that's what you heard always like the good um, scientists from Iran suddenly start the car and the car blow, uh, boom like that because, because someone is already puts the weapons. So 
AWS is, is the really enjoy using by the country who practice the extraterritorial jurisdiction. Uh, like my country, we don't do that. Uh, so we, we are not feeling anything and we are not interested with AWS also because we're not going to spend lots of money on that because at this moment, I don't think my country would like to have a war with any country. So, and we are not also offer ourselves to be the, the, the refugees, no. So this is the thing. When uh, autonomous weapon system are being introduced and at this moment, uh, people in IHL, especially ICRC, uh, human rights, and also there's... Uh, uh, community regarding the weapons in in United Nations work very hard to give the awareness to try to have the guideline. For me, at this moment, ICRC is the the best uh, body that I see try their best to protect, to have the debate, to control, to have a guidelines to give the awareness to everyone to ensure that you know that AWS is a very dangerous. The system that you use is very dangerous. It's an upgrade to the scale of them, the damage that can be done that you cannot tell how much is it, yeah? And also the, 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 the my last slide is regarding the regulation and the recommendation. Then, okay, you know that, right? This country that have the production of uh, the production of of the mil uh, the the civil uh, sorry the the military uh, weapon is all the the first world country. Israel, US, China, South Africa, Turkey, and others. It's all the country. So can you ask them to stop? US, stop, don't produce it. No, no, because US export number one is weapon. Not other things. First export that US have to export around the world is a weapon. Second is pornography. Uh, they're not going to, don't, don't tell me that they are, their industry, this, that. No, no, no. That's what they have. Yeah. So regulation and recommendation that if you, you can't stop them for doing that, you cannot say you cannot do that. You also cannot put the rules on this superpower because they are the very five uh, vetoes power in security councils and five of them involved in this autonomous weapon system. Useless five, I said. So, what we can do is ICRC and others uh, body and especially the uh, this uh, IHL expert, they just try to say limits on the type of targets. You have to you have to create where is the limits on the type of targets, and, and especially you have to tell that if you are in the battlefield, just use it in the battlefield when there is a you and your enemy, not using it on the target which is any target. Yeah, and second, limits on the duration. You know, you can't just simply put it two hours, you know, limit it because the two hours can kill everyone. Uh, because if a normal war, two hours might can kill 50 people, but if that, maybe the whole town. So you must limit the duration. The more longer you use it, the more people die. And also the geographical scope and scale of use. Okay, geographical scope, as I say, if it did in the city, just in the city, not use it everywhere. And the scale of use also even just make it sure that you have a small scale of it. If you open it for the long duration, uh, this geographical are uh, like unknown or, or free. And then the scale of use is like very minimum, very weight and very big. Then we will see the disaster. And then limit on situation of use. We are try very best to tell them, okay, limit on use you know, the situation of use, maybe on the very, very serious conflict, not in normal conflict, you let it go. No, it's a very, very serious conflict that you need to, to get a permission to use. That what we try, you know, this body tried to say to all those uh, manufacturers. And then requirements for human machine, human machine interaction. You cannot just simply put the electronic and leave, like what we have, what happened now, leave it. You must yeah, have the human interaction, meaning that still control by the human being. This is what they don't want. They want, they don't want it because for them, now they can just give 3,000 robots on field, kill the enemy. See the robot with the four legs and, and one, uh, one head, and you just, if you got 3,000 of it and you just leave it in Baghdad and kill all the people in Baghdad, that is what they do. 
But for us, no, no, you must control it. You must have a right to control on this machine because the machine doesn't have a feeling. And if they have a feeling, like human beings also are still not the same. Yeah. So ICRC recommend that state adopt new legality binding rules because ICRC is the body that for me at this moment, very, very much, very good, very well, try themselves to stop to campaign and give awareness to everywhere is the RCRC. So RCRC leave this, look at this autonomous weapon system as a very dangerous. And they are the only body that campaigning around the world recommend that the state should adopt new legally binding rules. First, they said it's unpredictable. Autonomous weapon systems should be expressly ruled out. Yeah, And then the use of Autonomous weapon system to target human being should rule out. For them, it's a very dangerous. Uh, I see actually try to tell the country that love to use this that you need to select and be very careful when you want to use this. Not in all conflict, not in all level, not in all scale, not, not, not. There must be a really important, proportionate with the enemy. Because we don't want, and you need to use it in the very, the scale is very small. And in that particular area and not others. But again, I leave it for you to think, do you think the country respect ICRC? Do you think all the countries that their income is come from this weapon will respect the recommendation by RCRC? If you say yes, you give the reason why. If you think that no, they don't care. Also why? You justify your answer. Because from that, you will start to look. That is it we are talking here, the human life or the superpowers uh, struggles to, to be in their status quo. So uh, actually, really, the, the superpower care about us. Because they always say that we are defending the peace, we are come to free you, blah, blah, blah. Are we actually defend by them? Uh, actually, are we really need them in our country? Do you think that your country need this kind of thing? Or do you think that your country must have this uh, autonomous weapon system? So this is all come back to you, okay? So with that, I say thank you very much for my discussion today. And I give back to Dr. Rosmalinda for any, and also to the student for any discussion. Thank you. You, you can ask any question, yeah? If you, if you want to ask or anything that you want to say, I, I give it to, I, I don't have any, any problem. If you have any, uh anything to to ask or something also you can just ask oh i see there is a question right okay uh all right let me see the question what is the question there okay it's from group c yeah? okay uh excuse me professor i would like to raise a question as what you have already explained about how sophisticated is this technology that used in the armed conflict with produce an extremely dangerous impact i would okay how how it can be the effort eh, to to regulate proportionality in armed wars between countries okay that's what i said how we want to proportionate when one party have this system and another party do not have the system. It would be unfair. But for the party who have this, they are very happy because they can drag the war and give more uh, suffer to the another side. That's why the HIHL and HCRC really try their best to ensure that at least there is a deterrence in that kind of situation. And second, at least they must have proportionality. But because if you don't have the proportionality, and in many wars in around the world, there is no proportionality despite what is being asked by the Geneva Convention. So it's very hard to regulate proportionality when it's involved this AWS. Because as I said to you, AWS is about how much money that the country really can spend. The more money means more sophisticated, more crazy, more kills. 
But if you have a, a little bit money, then your advancement is not that much. So if you're talking about effort to regulate professionality, yes, the effort is done by, by the party that I said in the early of the lecture and also ICRC. But are you thinking that the country will respect? I doubt it. Because for them, this is the best that they can do. Okay. And then I see the, the second question. I would like to ask a question. Several military experts and roboticists have argued that autonomous weapons system should not be uh, regarded as morally acceptable, but also that they would in fact be ethically preferable to human fighters. Okay, for example, this uh, robotics, uh, this roboticist Ronald C. Arkin believe autonomous robots in the future will be able to act more humanly on the battlefield for a number of reasons, including that they do not need to be programmed with self-preservation instincts, potentially eliminating the need for a shoot first, ask question later attitude. What if uh, AWS would become our future as robot fighting, robot not fighting into another human, it will be about technological war, not humanitarian law. Doesn't it be better? For instance, we, we give a fear for the robot to hear a war. <laughs> the only thing is the war is, the, the, that robot is very expensive. Uh, at this moment, only US uh, that really have that. Yeah, and Israel, I think they have also, when it comes to the very dangerous area, they don't use their army, they use their, their that kind of robot. Okay, if you are talking about the, the new technological technology, which is about robot fighting robots, I think that is very far from now to, to, to come reality because not all the country. Uh, it's, even if you look at the Southeast Asia, we not even have a submarine with the nuclear weapons yet, not even nuclear power. So this is where I think that if you were talking about this, I think that I'm not sure whether it takes about another 50 to 70 years for the developing countries where there are so many other countries are still struggling to get the water and this, the first world country are talking about the robots versus robot. So for me, back to back, that is, that, that is it's very far. It's very far. I mean, if you're talking about the robots to yield a war, that, that must be good, but I think that is more on film rather than the reality. Because the reality is we are still lack of budgeting on, on our military expenditure. And also I think we we are not ready for it. Good if we have a robot, but we have another law, set of law later, later on. But if you're talking about that thing to be happened now, it's not. Still for me, I don't believe that robot will have human. How you want to inject human into robots? No, it's not going to be happen. It's not a life. So the life is, they don't have a blood. They not even can have a brain to think. It's a bumper projection. So I think uh, still, if you say it's a good, it might go, but not now. It might be 100 years, but that will be another level altogether. Yeah. So for this time being, it still gives advantage to the country who have it and to make that other country feel intimidated and, and have to quiet. Okay. All right. Someone is raised up the hand. Group yes, E, yeah. Okay, check. please. Yes, Group E, say. Yes. Uh, okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, as an interruption, my name is Francis Ryan. I'm from Group E, as in from ECO. So I have this question. Uh, we've been highlighting on the humans, uh, the inhuman side of AWS, which is of course a big threat and will damage and pose instability in humanitarian law. Yet we didn't think that an object will have the power to be autopiloted until now and recently. In any case, in the future or maybe in the long future, if we are capable of producing AWS, which has its own consideration uh, with the right program as reading symbols, but it is a retreat, civilian symbols, and even Red Cross members, will, a will AWS still propose the harms as we have been discussing about? That's the first question, and I'll go to the second one. Uh, Professor Salawati, I have a question. Do do we still? Oh, sorry. Do you still have, or do you might will you might propose an idea? How would we best handle this issue with AY AWS as the current situation, not in the future, as I as mentioned before? Thank you, Professor. Okay, for the question number one is actually yes, uh, very much. We try our best to ensure that. Uh, all this regulation uh, have to be protected under this um, IHL. But again, 
as I said to you, it's a very hard because we have we are facing the biggest economic giant to control the world that producing a military weapon. So I have I want you to open your mind. Remember that I said last week. When you talk about the international humanitarian law, please do not look only solely of it. Look also the world politics. World politics means who dominated by the US at this moment. So US is number one productions of the military weapons. Do you think that they want to follow what we are supposed to ask them to do? Definitely no. So we can, that's why I say ICRC and all others try to bring it according to the international law to put, you know, at least look at it. Yeah. But it's very hard because, because US is the superpower. And when you talk about the superpower, they talking about how they be the number one. And the result is always back to them. So uh, this is something that I, I think always be a dilemma for all of us yeah okay the question number two how the best to handle the issues i think the best to handle the issue is at this moment is every country must always show their determination to reject this aws system in the any conflict because okay us even though they are superpowers but if the, all the countries all the countries around the world reject it then they also feel like, okay, I might not be, you know, at this time, so good with this. Because look, so many people don't like it you know, when it's come to this. Yes, that is the only one. Remember, US is always want to stop people talking about Palestine in the United Nations. And but when 192 countries stand up and say yes for the Palestine, and US just keep quiet. Because why? And then they start to realize that, yes, the whole world accept. The fact is that Israel is actually the one who dominate, not Palestine, Palestinian. So this is the issue where, where we look at it. And I do believe that the only thing to say no to is if there is unity, the whole world. But again, to get that unity also, we must not owe anything to US or to China. The problem is many of developing countries and poor countries actually owe them through the economy. So that's why this is the problem. So the best is only for this time if we can reject it nicely according to international law. But again, there is always a things behind that to do that. Okay. All right. I say there is one question here from group E. They said, good afternoon. Uh, this is regarding uh, the Hiroshima Nagasaki. I would, I would like to ask a question. The US has been testing their most advanced weapons on civilian. Uh, Okay, why is running this? Okay, wait, uh, I suddenly is it's not being seen here. Oh, come on. Okay, a testing uh, in weapons in many times. In Afghanistan, Iran, and we can even track back to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Civilians' casualties are resulted. This is clearly an offense to this humanitarian law. Does the U.S. receive any punishment regarding this? Or can we conclude that the U.S. are immune to the humanitarian law? Okay, first of all, all the war that created by U.S. are illegal. These are illegal. The only problem that we cannot punish them because they are one of the superpowers vetoes at the Security Council. To punish these people, you need to get blessed by this, from these five super, super, superpower. Unfortunate, the most superpowers there is actually the one who love to create a problem in international humanitarian law. So how you want to punish somebody that have the veto in their hands? That's why my former Prime Minister, Stun Mahathir, many, many times condemned. He not only critic, he condemned already this situation. For him, what you're talking about? You are going around the world and talking, oh, look, you must believe in peace, you must blah, blah, blah. But at this time, the war that you launched on Afghanistan and Iraq is illegal war. And only when people talk about it after almost 15 years, the, uh, this uh, illegal war that created many people die, many people suffer, many people are being abused. You know, there are so many, many things. So then after 15 years, why? Because the people who are launched that is no more in the administration. We are so scared about it. So 
the question that are they receive any punishment no they don't receive any punishment us will never ever become the member of icc and never can even sign because they don't want their uh, their personnel to be persecuted because they know what they have done in many countries from vietnam to laos to cambodia to uh, to afghanistan to iraq to syria you name it to yemen don't forget to yemen the worst part of it being forgotten that's who lead that despite saudi arabia lead that they are also being blessed by the us because saudi arabia is the largest members in uh, arab land that bought the uh, military uh, expenditure from us in fact i think that this is the one that you have to understand that is the one that understand to uh, i can i want you to understand that make this uh the arab peninsula getting more worse so us knows about it they are the one who created it and they know they're not going to be punished and immune from that because they are the superpower who have the veto second they are not member of icc to sign so there's nothing happened to them and yet now they are going to south china sea to create another problem and then we were going to see the effect if we are not you know being careful with them so that's why they don't get anything not because they are not uh, they are not uh, guilty they are very much guilty but because they have this superpowers veto in security council then you would not even want to talk uh, the only thing you look you yourself look how many times all the countries around the world want to punish israel we just want to punish them by condemn not to launch any attack on israel just to critique what they have done for 75 years to palestinian Every time we want to open the motion, it's already being debated by US and UK and France and will be abstained by the China and this Russia. So what? Next. Very hard. Unless we also have this kind of a superpower like them. So that's why I agree with Tun Mahathir that why we have to, why we have to dreaming when the reality is the system is unfair to everyone as security council delete all this obsolete this five superpower then we will be fine so that's it thank you so much for the answer professor thank you this is uh, 220 now yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure where's the Dr. Rosmalinda because normally I been asked I'm about... here. I'm here. Ah, okay. I'm here, bro. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm not sure whether there is a student want to answer to ask the question because mm -hmm. I read already, finished already. So that's it. Okay. Prof, thank you. I think we we will do a closing for now. Uh, but before you are leaving. Congratulations for your team who won the prize yeah, yeah. for the humanitarian competition Malaysia. in Malaysia. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Last, last. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They are Some going to us. Albania. <laughs> oh, for, for this year is Albania. Albania, yes. Oh, so okay. Albania. oh I have a goosebump now. So I hope, I hope. Uh, our students will go uh, in one country. Could be, could be, yeah. Uh, we will follow uh, Prof. Salawati students. Inshallah, inshallah, no problem. I think, I think this is like this. I think your, I, I can say that your student is very good. You know, they pick up very well uh, from my lectures that last week, this week. I think I would look at their question. I think I do believe that uh, you, you have. Uh, the very quality student, doctor, very much. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy that after the border can be open, I want to go to your university. I think I think there are many things that we can do together. You know, mm -hmm. I, I do believe it. And uh, I also like long, long time, you know, I don't go for, to Sumatra. So I think that will be the best time. I look like when the, they open the border and Indonesia also love to say, welcome back, Malaysian. <laughs> then we will always go and take the flight. No problem. But I, I want to congratulate your student and you for a very good treatment to me for the second week. And also the question is for me, it's very good. They really study it very well. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Then uh, thank you that you are delightful to be our 
could be next year be supervised uh, a supervisor for our team for the humanitarian uh, com competition. competition hope so why not if there is a yes. possibility to work together why not mm -hmm. yes yes thank you prop so if you want to leave thank you and okay. uh, Yes, uh, because I have to, uh, I, I have to say uh, statement. closing statement for my students. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, doctor and the student. I see you for the last time next week. Thank you. Thank you. So take care. Bye. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Para mahasiswa sekalian, terima kasih sudah berkenan uh, hadir sampai pada uh, selesainya perkuliahan kita dan kita masih ada satu kali kuliah ya nak untuk uh, kedepannya. Uh, tadi yang hadir juga ada Bu Yati ya Ada Bu Yati Gak ada ya Bu Yati ya Oh iya Bu Yati Sarvina Desi Andri Tidak kelihatan videonya Bu Oke okay, oke okay. ya yeah, uh -uh. Oke, okay, that's oke, okay, that's oke. Okay. Uh, terima kasih ya, berarti kita ada beberapa grup. Uh, jangan lupa untuk... Uh, Saya Iya, daftar hadir ya, jangan lupa. Daftar hadir diisi ya, nak. Oke, okay, see you next week. Uh, untuk grup E, jangan lupa g nya saya tunggu ya, nak. Untuk evaluasi pertemuan hari ini. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam, Mem. Thank you, Mem. Terima kasih, Mem. Terima kasih, Mem. Terima kasih, Mem.